السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته معكم طارق احمد طالب بلاش تنفسي من جامعه الملك عبد العزيز um, today I'm going to talk about asthma management with you and um, we're going to discuss these objectives asthma management uh, definition prevalence cause diagnosis asthma control and management okay first of all we have to define asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease that caused by hyperresponsiveness of the airway and manifests as wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and cough. And these are the four main, four main symptoms of asthma. And it's a coronary episodic way. It's not present all the time. So asthma, if it's managed well, it will, it will be a mild disease and can be managed uh, by ambulatory care that means patient doesn't need to be attached to something or restricted in the hospital. Um, the prevalence of asthma, according to Regina guidelines uh, 2020, um, they said that uh, asthmatic uh, asthma affects 1 to 18 of the population in different countries. Uh, and so the initiative for asthma said that incidence and prevalence of asthma increased in the last 20 years because, and they said it's because changing your lifestyle uh, in transport and type of foods and so on. So uh, prevalence of asthma in United States is 6.4%, and then so the is 4%, according to their study. Um, so this initiative for asthma also addressed that many asthmatic patients are uncontrolled and continue to be underdiagnosed and undertreated and at risk of acute attacks. Uh, it's because asthma is a long-term condition, and long-term conditions require uh, it's a complex relationship between the patient and the physician and the patient family also. Um, so it's not going to work if the patient refuses the treatment, for example. Um, but it's required the patient coordination. And it will result in the high cost, missed work or school, and expensive uh, acute health care services. Um, one of the most important uh, parts of asthma is the cost. And there is, there's three types of cost. Direct cost, uh, which represent the uh, the resource consumed, which are uh, drugs, doctor and RT times, hospital, and disposable equipment. Uh, indirect horse, uh, which is the lost resource uh, that patient will lose, uh, like productive work, or even if the patient was in school, so in the school days, uh, and the family and friends time by looking after an asthmatic patient if he uh, has a severe exacerbation or hospitalization. And the third is the intangible costs, uh, it's reduced quality of life, uh, like patients will be unhappy and have fear, pain. Um, and there is a substantial evidence that indicates that if we control the asthma, it will reduce the cost by prophylactic therapy and patient education. Um, some may ask that by giving the patient prophylactic therapy or patient education, we are, uh, we are it's, it's cost money, but uh, there is a study published in 1996 called asthma cost. Uh, it said that uh, one hospitalization of asthmatic patients will be for three years using of inhaled corticosteroids. So it will save a lot of money by controlling uh, asthma. Um, now to the diagnosis. Um, this flow chart done by uh, GINA 2020 guidelines. Um, in the diagnosis of asthma, we rely on three parts. Uh, history, physical exam, and uh, BFT results and reversibility test. Um, in the history, we are going to ask about family history, if there is any uh, relative uh, that have asthma, um, and the occupational history, um, lifestyle of the patient, maybe he have bits or any triggers of asthma, we are going to ask about smoking history. Um, and this is the part of history. And we are going to ask about the four main symptoms of asthma uh, that we addressed before, uh, how they manifest, because asthma, asthmatic patients usually uh, have a variable uh, symptoms at variable times. So uh, it maybe comes uh, flare up at night or after exercise or after laughing. So we're going to ask about these things. Um, the physical examination part, if the patient comes to the clinic, I will not see anything. The patient will be absolutely clear. Um, even if it's just X-ray, it will be clear. Um, the third part is the BFT. 
we're going to do a reversibility test. Uh, if he was positive, we're, we're going to treat him as asthma. Um, but even uh, the patient have reversible airway uh, bronchoconstriction, um, it's not definite that it's, it's asthma. So they need another approaches to diagnose asthma. Maybe the patient have uh, asthma COPD overlap and it's known syndrome. Uh, when the patient have a COPD characteristics uh, and asthma a reversible bronchoconstriction. So we will not be able to differentiate. But if in this case, we are going to give him asthma medication. Um, another diagnostic approach uh, are bronchial challenge tests, body blitz monography, and excel nitrate site. Uh, as for the bronchial change test, it's measure only the airway hyperresponsiveness, which can be in other disease. So this is an important point. Uh, we have two types, direct, which means that it directly affect the airway smooth muscle, uh, the um, histamine and methacholine. And in direct, like exercise, we're not affecting, affecting the uh, airway smooth muscle directly. Uh, so. As we said that uh, bronchial change test measure the airway hyperresponsiveness, so it's high, it has high sensitivity and low specificity. Um, sensitivity, that means it's gonna tell me that there is an abnormality, but specificity, uh, that it's not gonna tell me low specificity, it's not gonna tell me that there, there is abnormality, which is asthma. So uh, high sensitivity patient will, uh, will maybe be COPD patient, the patient may have viral infection, all will cause airway hyperresponsiveness. Um, and there is a research that uh, published in 2020 said that uh, uh, how about to use bronchial uh, challenge test in the primary care after doing uh, BF, uh, BFT reversibility test. Uh, there is uh, two concerns about the safety and about the reliability. Um, the test conclude that using histamine for uh, as a direct bronchial challenge test uh, for uh, provocation, it's safe and reliable and to, it will reduce the misdiagnosis and the need to uh, transfer to secondary care and not diagnose asthma primary. Uh, body blitz monography, um, there is a st study that involved uh, 302 patients. Um, it's conclude that using uh, air, airway resistance measurement in the body based monography um, has the high certainty of ruling out asthma, uh, but low predictive value for asthma. And all of these are another approach other than defini the definitive one, which is the PFT reversibility test. Oxide uh, nitric oxide is more commonly used for um, monitoring asthma other than diagnosis. So these are the normal value. Uh, 25 and 20, 25 for, uh, for adults and children 20. Uh, exhaled nitric oxide um, will be uh, high uh, when there is airway inflammation, as in asthma. So um, when we use it as um, monitoring, we'll see if there is increase in exhaled nitric oxide, that means the patient doesn't use, uh, doesn't use his uh, inhaled uh, corticosteroid therapy as prescribed. Um, now in control, um, there is a um, variety of tests that uh, measure asthma control, but this is the most common one. Um, it's a multidimensional standardized uh, asthma control test, uh, and it's the one used here by the Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia. And there is two types, one for adults and another for children. Um, the one for adults con uh, consists of five items, asthma symptoms, uh, and use of risk of medication. Uh, and by uh, see, seeing, uh, by addressing uh, the using of risk of medications here, the use of risk of medication, it's not indication that the patient is really using uh, his medication as described. It's a sign of danger. And we'll discuss about it later. Uh, the effect of asthma on daily functioning, the patient's perception, and it's two parts, it will be five. Uh, five quick, uh, quick uh, questions. Um, this is an example, and it's, it's come in uh, uh, a lot of ways, but this uh, proper example, um, if the patient have 19 or less, that means the patient is under control. There is a study that says 
uh, if the patient have 15 uh, results in uh, asthma control test, the patient is predicted to be in uh, future asthma exacerbation. Um, now for children, asthma control test, uh, it's composed of seven questions. Um, it's made up for children because the caregiver also have to report uh, his uh, answer. Four uh, child reported and three care caregiver reported questions. Um, for the child, uh, uh, the daytime and activity limitation, Nicktorian awakening due to asthma, self-perception of asthma, it's slow part, so it's all four. And this is an example um, of children asthma control test. Now to the management. Um, there's a research started by asthma disease management and respiratory therapist said that disease management is a comprehensive and coordinated system. Uh, all long-term condition, including asthma, um, consider the patient as a corner store, stone in its management, like diabetes, hypertension. If the patient um, doesn't participate, didn't participate in his uh, uh, management, it will absolutely so in uh, asthma management, um, there is two two term uh, goals: uh, risk educations and symptoms control. And it's done by asthma action plan. We will see. Um, the aim to reduce uh, the aim to manage is to reduce the burden to the patient. Um, uh, uh, and as we said, that the patient is an important part of this management. The patient own go own goals and preference regarding the, their asthma should be taken in concern. Um, and this is the cycle um, made up by uh, GINA 2020 guidelines. Uh, they address three parts. Assessing, uh, we're going to assist the patients, uh, the symptoms control, risk factors, comorbidities, the patient have any other respiratory disease. And after that, we're going to adjust what we assist if it needs. Um, if it doesn't need, we're not going to adjust anything. Uh, after adjustment, we're going to review uh, our response. Reviewing our response can be in two ways, like uh, saying the patient directly, uh, his symptoms, exacerbation, number of exacerbation, uh, and side effect of his medications, or by um, doing the asthma control test, which can be also an effective way to measure the response in general. Uh, this is the pharmacological uh, management for uh, asthmatic patients, uh, five steps. Uh, what's new? Uh, it's a pretty common uh, image uh, and diagram done by GINA guidelines. Um, what's changed now is that uh, all asthmatic patients should take enhanced corticosteroid. In the past, they said, okay, step one, uh, mild asthmatic patient can use only SABA, short acting lead agonist, as needed. But now uh, it's not. All uh, asthmatic patients should take enhanced corticosteroid as needed. Uh, and they address why they change it. Um, okay, um, SABA rule. Um, why did they give up on SABA? Because SABA only is a uh, rescue medication. It will not prevent the airway inflammation. It's only for bronchoconstriction. Uh, and airway inflammation is uh, common in asthmatic patients. So uh, recurrent airway inflammation will cause airway remodeling, which is permanent for this patient and uh, will cause a uh, lot of problems. Uh, sub only treatment, they found that it's increased the risk of exacerbation and lower lung function um, in long term. Um, and regular, regular use of SABA, um, as it's like preventer or control medication, uh, it will reduce the response when the patient really need a rescue medication with acute attack. And overuse, three or more canister increases the risk of uh, severe exacerbation, and a 12 will increase asthma related death risk. And this uh, pharmacological uh, management for child uh, from six to 11 years. Um, what if the patient uh, is not compliant with his uh, uh, action, with, uh, with his plan? There is uh, three problems, main problems, incorrect inhaler technique, poor adherence, modifiable risk factors. Uh, first, inhaler uh, technique. How to ensure effective inhaler use? We're going to use the four Cs. 
uh, by choosing the most appropriate device for the patient. Uh, and we have to consider the cost because it's a long-term condition and patient will live with it and we have maybe to change the right uh, style according to the disease. Uh, so um, the most uh, appropriate device we're going to choose uh, and then check his inhaler technique. And all of all studies said that you have never assumed that the patient already know how to use uh, his medication. Even if the patient was diagnosed in 10 past years, you have every uh, every opportunity to recheck inhaler technique with the patient and uh, correct it by physical demonstration, which is the most effective way to uh, learn the, the patient, uh, then check his technique for two or three times. Uh, then confirm uh, his uh, prescription and uh, the, his demonstration. Um, how to ensure adherence? Um, well, there's three parts. Uh, by asking the patient directly uh, a simple question that like uh, uh, how um, um, uh, you are, uh, are you using uh, your medications? Uh, how often did you use uh, your medication last week? Zero, four, two. Um, and then check his medication uh, by uh, medication usage by inhaler dose uh, counter or even if he writing diary. Uh, his, uh, his using. Uh, after that, we're going to ask about attitudes and beliefs about asthma medication. And this is an uh, important uh, part about, uh, regarding the pregnant asthmatic patient because there is a study uh, published by Dr. Muhammad and uh, his colleagues in uh, 2018 uh, that said that, uh, that measured the uh, pregnant uh, asthmatic patients' uh, perception about their uh, asthma medication. And there is a pretty high percentage that said maybe 48 that said that uh, they can they will not use uh, their medications because they because they think it's gonna hurt them or hurt the baby. And there is 28 maybe uh, 22 uh, said that it's okay if uh, I can use it if my physician said so. Um, improving adherence intervention. Uh, Gina 2020 said a lot of things about interventions that can improve the adherence, but from research, from a lot of research that said mobile apps now showing excellent uh, results, uh, monitoring, reminding, education the patient more about asthma it can even uh, do more than uh, improving the adherence. Uh, about the monitoring, um, there is, we're going to talk about, talk about peak expiratory flow, flow rate as a monitor. Um, there is a study uh, the, uh, published in uh, 2017, I think. Um, the, the author maybe was a little biased, but he just listed the disadvantage of peak expiratory flow rate, so I took it. Um, he said that it's not used, uh, useful at all and it should not be used, uh, but it's uh, it addressed in the guidelines using of peak expiratory flow rate as uh, monitor device in the MOH uh, guidelines and also in GNA 2020. Um, the disadvantage that our change in BK exploratory flow, um, it's not accurate and it's, it's well known. Uh, it's not accurate as the uh, first exploratory volume at first second or fourth vital capacity. The second one is the mood relation to the BK exploratory flow. Uh, mood may affect the result uh, because it's affect the effort. So, uh, it will not be accurate again. Um, and the other one is the compliance with daily break exploratory flow. The study uh, also published that uh, most asthmatic patients are fabricated their uh, results. So it's not. It's also not accurate and uh, not uh, useful. Um, and they just fill uh, uh, their diary of peak exploratory flow. Uh, uh, they just fill it uh, without doing the uh, test. Uh, but as we, as we said, um, in the medical industry in general, cost is very important and prediction also is very important. So uh, big exploratory flow uh, advantages, uh, it's cost, cost effective, simple and handheld and it's provide a prediction and this is very important in asthma.
patients uh, other than the symptoms because it uh, can be recognized easily. Um, now for the patient action plan, uh, it's done uh, for, uh, to the patient so to help him recognize his symptoms and how to respond to his symptoms. And this is an example. Um, uh, this asthma action plan. Um, what, what should the patient do if his symptoms get worse? Uh, what uh, he should, what he shouldn't? Um, now for the respiratory therapist rule. Um, uh, asthma disease is a common disease that's managed by uh, RT and can be also diagnosed by RT in some place other than here. Um, RT can regularly conduct uh, medications, self-management, uh, and uh, advice about uh, asthma devices, how to use it, and uh, how to improve adherence. Um, and there is the study that uh, also published, I think, in, uh, um, in 2008, 2008. Um, that's, it's all, all the study was talking about how RTs are effective and efficient also. Um, and they um, uh, made the experiment in the in a hospital in America between 2000 and 2002 um, after adding RT to asthmatic uh, patient care. And they found that uh, RT reduced uh, uh, miss, uh, the prescription medication and improved, uh, reduced the cost. Uh, so, uh, RT role in clinic, uh, they are not working in clinic here, but they can be. Uh, they help in diagnostic support uh, because they are also experts in uh, BFT. Uh, they are doing uh, education for the patient, uh, assessment of adherence, and smoking cessation counseling and device education. Um, in the emergency department, they will implement the protocol regarding observation while managing airway and oxygen uh, therapy. So uh, it's well known also now RT is a key member of asthma disease management team. And also this research, uh, research this research uh, uh, published 2008, uh, they said we, we are uh, expecting increasing in the RT need in 2014. Um, uh, significantly, and now they're increasing more because of COVID. Um, okay, um, the last part, asthma exacerbation. Uh, this flow chart done by uh, MOH. Uh, asthma exacerbation, that means we are going to meet the patient at the ER, so we have to be fast and to confirm the diagnosis if we can, uh, or if the patient is known to be asthmatic patient. Uh, so we have two pathways. If, uh, if we can confirm it, uh, we will give him the treatment. But if we are um, have a higher probability of the, that this uh, this is asthma, we are also going to give him a systemic uh, corticosteroid, uh, salbutamol, and ibrotropium uh, bromide. Uh, and every uh, 20 minutes, we will continue uh, giving him nebulization. Um, and that's it. إذا كان أحد عنده أي سؤال ممكن يتفضل. Okay, I found um the one in some key to chat or some of the camera the video. Okay, okay. Okay, um
اوكي كده خلصنا شكرا للجميع